Picture this. You're standing in your garden, rototiller humming, watching the blades churn through what you think is preparation for a bountiful harvest. But what if I told you that every pass of that machine is actually destroying the very foundation your plants need to thrive? Most gardeners and farmers till because they think it helps, but the reality is far more troubling. That satisfying feeling of turning over fresh, loose soil is actually the sound of a thriving underground ecosystem being demolished. In this comprehensive guide, we'll explore why tilling has become one of the most destructive practices in modern gardening, and more importantly, what you can do instead to grow healthier food with significantly less effort. The secret lies in understanding that your soil isn't just dirt. It's a living, breathing community that works tirelessly to support your plants when left undisturbed. Tilling is the process of mechanically breaking up soil through various methods, from hand tools like spades and hoes to powerful rototillers and plows. For centuries, farmers and gardeners have relied on this practice to loosen compacted earth, incorporate organic matter, prepare seed beds, and control weeds. The logic seems sound loose soil allows roots to penetrate easily, organic amendments get mixed in evenly, and buried weeds won't compete with crops. However, this traditional approach treats soil as an inert growing medium rather than the complex living system it actually is. Modern soil science has revealed that what we consider good tillage practices are actually working against nature's own sophisticated methods of soil management. Every time we till, we're essentially hitting the reset button on millions of years of evolutionary soil development. The tools we use for tilling range from simple hand implements to massive tractors pulling multi-bottom plows. Rototillers, perhaps the most common tool in home gardens, use rotating tines to chop and mix soil to depths of 6 to 8 inches. While this creates an immediately satisfying appearance of well-prepared earth, the long-term consequences are devastating for soil health and plant vitality. When you till your garden, you're essentially running a bulldozer through a thriving underground city. The soil beneath our feet hosts an incredibly complex network of organisms that work together in what scientists call the soil food web. This intricate system includes bacteria, fungi, protozoa, nematodes, arthropods, and earthworms, all playing crucial roles in plant nutrition and soil structure. The most critical casualties of tilling are mycorrhizal fungi, microscopic organisms that form symbiotic relationships with plant roots. These fungi extend thread-like structures called hyphae throughout the soil, effectively expanding a plant's root system by up to 1,000 times. In exchange for sugars from the plant, mycorrhizae deliver essential nutrients like phosphorus, nitrogen, and trace minerals that would otherwise remain locked in the soil. When you till, you physically sever these delicate fungal networks, leaving plants nutritionally stranded and forcing them to rely entirely on whatever nutrients are immediately available in the disturbed soil. You know, earthworms, those tireless soil engineers, really suffer tremendously from tillage. These creatures create extensive tunnel systems that improve soil aeration and drainage, all while depositing nutrient-rich castings throughout their burrows. A single earthworm can process its own body weight in soil every single day, but, unfortunately, tilling equipment kills them directly through physical damage and, uh, indirectly by destroying their habitat and food sources. The bacterial communities that drive nutrient cycling also, well, face devastation during tillage. Many soil bacteria are anaerobic, meaning they thrive in environments with limited oxygen. When tilling exposes them to air and sunlight, these beneficial microorganisms die en masse, disrupting the complex biochemical processes that, you know, make nutrients available to plants. Perhaps most critically, tilling accelerates the decomposition of soil organic matter at an unsustainable rate. Organic matter, especially stable humus, is the foundation of soil fertility and structure. When this material is mixed with oxygen through tillage, it burns up rapidly, releasing stored carbon into the atmosphere and honestly depleting the soil's long-term fertility reserves. Healthy soil isn't just a random collection of particles. It's actually an organized structure built by living organisms over time. 
You see, soil aggregates, those small clumps that give good soil its crumbly texture, are held together by biological glues produced by fungi, bacteria, and plant roots. These aggregates create pore spaces that allow air and water to move through the soil while providing habitat for beneficial organisms. Tilling destroys this carefully constructed architecture instantly. The mechanical action breaks apart aggregates creating a homogeneous mixture that initially appears ideal but quickly develops serious problems. Without the biological binding agents to hold particles together, tilled soil becomes prone to compaction especially when wet. Over time, repeated tillage creates a hardpan layer just below the depth of cultivation, effectively creating a barrier that prevents deep root penetration and proper drainage. This structural breakdown also leads to increased erosion. Bare, pulverized soil has no protection from wind and rain, making it vulnerable to being washed or blown away. The irony is that while gardeners till to improve their soil, they're actually accelerating its loss through erosion and degradation. You know, the water holding capacity of tilled soil also suffers dramatically. When you have intact soil structure with its network of pores and channels, it can actually absorb and store significant amounts of water, releasing it slowly to plants as needed. But if that soil structure gets destroyed, it leads to rapid water runoff and pore infiltration which can create drought stress even in areas that get plenty of rainfall. The solution to tilling's destructive cycle really lies in adopting no-till gardening methods that work with natural soil processes, rather than against them. No-till gardening recognizes that soil organisms are the best soil improvers, and honestly, our job is simply to create conditions where they can thrive. Permanent bed systems form the foundation of successful no-till gardening. By establishing dedicated growing areas that are never walked on or compacted, you allow soil structure to develop and mature over time. These beds become increasingly productive as biological activity builds soil fertility and structure naturally. The key here is patience. While tilled beds might look immediately ready for planting, no-till beds improve dramatically over multiple seasons. So, mulching becomes your primary tool for soil management in a no-till system. You know, organic mulches like straw, leaves, wood chips, or even compost, they do a fantastic job protecting the soil surface while feeding the organisms below. As mulch decomposes, it's gradually incorporated into the soil by earthworms and other creatures, kind of mimicking the natural process of forest floor decomposition. This constant input of organic matter builds soil structure while suppressing weeds and conserving moisture. Cover crops represent another powerful tool for soil building without tillage. Plants like crimson clover, winter rye, buckwheat, and radishes, they can be grown specifically to improve soil health. Their roots penetrate those compacted layers, add organic matter, and feed soil organisms. When cover crops are terminated by cutting rather than tilling, they leave root channels that improve soil structure and provide pathways for subsequent crops. For situations where some soil loosening is necessary, tools like broad forks offer a gentler alternative to rotary tillage. Broad forking lifts and fractures soil without inverting or mixing layers, preserving soil structure while relieving compaction. This technique respects the soil's layered ecosystem while addressing physical limitations. Top dressing with compost rather than mixing it in allows beneficial organisms to gradually incorporate organic matter at their own pace. This method feeds soil life while maintaining the existing soil structure that supports plant growth. The organisms know exactly where to place nutrients for maximum benefit to plants. Gardeners who transition to no-till methods consistently report dramatic improvements in their soil and plant health. Water retention becomes remarkably enhanced as soil structure develops and organic matter increases. Gardens that once required frequent watering can often go weeks without irrigation, even during dry periods. The improved soil structure creates a natural reservoir that captures and stores precipitation efficiently. Weed pressure typically decreases significantly after the first few seasons of no-till management. While disturbed soil brings buried weed seeds to the surface where they germinate, undisturbed soil keeps these seeds buried and dormant. 
The thick mulch layers used in no-till systems further suppress weeds while creating conditions favorable for desired plants. Plant growth becomes noticeably more vigorous as root systems develop the ability to access nutrients through these undisturbed fungal networks. Roots, you know, grow deeper and more extensively in structured soil, which makes plants a lot more resilient to environmental stresses. Interestingly, many gardeners report that their plants just seem to take care of themselves better in no-till systems. The need for external fertilizers? Well, it really diminishes dramatically as soil biological activity increases. Healthy soil organisms can mobilize nutrients from organic matter and even extract them from rock particles, creating a sort of self-sustaining fertility system. This not only reduces gardening costs, but it also produces more nutritious food with better flavor and storage quality. Perhaps most remarkably, the amount of work required decreases substantially over time. While establishing a no-till system does take some initial effort and patience, mature no-till gardens require far less maintenance than their tilled counterparts. No more backbreaking rototilling, reduced watering needs, fewer weeds, and minimal fertilizer requirements really make gardening more enjoyable and, honestly, a lot more sustainable. So, converting to no-till methods doesn't have to happen overnight. You can start by designating a small area as a no-till experiment, while gradually expanding successful practices throughout your garden. Begin by stopping all tillage in your chosen area, and immediately applying a thick layer of organic mulch. Then, plant through the mulch by simply pushing it aside to create planting holes. Be patient with the process. Soil improvement takes time but the results are worth waiting for. Your soil will become darker, more crumbly, and increasingly alive with beneficial organisms. You'll notice that established no-till beds become easier to work with each season as soil structure improves and biological activity increases. The journey from destructive tillage to regenerative soil management represents more than just a change in gardening technique. It's a fundamental shift toward working with natural systems rather than fighting against them. Your soil will reward this partnership with improved fertility, structure, and resilience that makes gardening more productive and enjoyable. Remember, every time you resist the urge to till, you're allowing millions of soil organisms to continue their work of building the foundation for healthy plant growth. The result is a garden that truly embodies the principles of living soil, productive, sustainable, and increasingly beautiful with each passing season. If you're ready to transform your garden into a thriving ecosystem that works with nature rather than against it, subscribe to the Living Soil Lab for more in-depth guides on soil-first gardening and regenerative methods. Share this guide with fellow gardeners who are ready to discover the power of undisturbed living soil. Together, we can grow healthier food while building healthier soil for future generations.